Have you ever wondered if your aeroplane will go faster if you clean and polish it? I know it's something I've often pondered. Today we're at Earls Cone Airfield, the home of Anglian Flight Centres, and we're going to find out. We're going to give this Cessna 172 some TLC. <laughs> This 1975 Reams Cessna 172 Skyhawk has been well looked after, but some of the paintwork, especially on top of the wings, is looking a little bit tarnished as they tend to do after a few years. It could do with a bit of a clean and polish. Now, aircraft cleaning companies often say that if you clean your aeroplane and polish the surfaces, it will actually go faster. And today, we're gonna to see if that actually turns out to be the case. So we fill the tanks to the top, take off and head to a nice clear bit of airspace. We're going to conduct two flight tests, one before and one after cleaning. My pilot is the Cessna's owner, Paul Gatland. It's going to take more than a day to properly clean and polish Paul's lovely Cessna here. And the air mass that we're flying through now could be quite a bit different tomorrow. The temperature and the pressure could change and that will affect the performance of the aeroplane, the drag over the wings, the, pro uh, the propeller's performance and so what we're going to do is we're actually not going to fly an altitude or a pressure altitude, we're going to fly a density altitude today and we'll fly a density altitude tomorrow, the same one, and see what the difference is. The density altitude in feet is equal to the pressure altitude in feet plus 120 multiplied by the difference between the outside air temperature and the international standard atmosphere temperature. As pilots, we're trained to do that calculation using an old-fashioned whiz wheel. I've lost mine, so I borrowed the demonstrator from the flying school. <laughs> sorry. sorry, Paul. OK, can you tell me what the pressure altitude is? So can you set 1013 on one of your altimeters for me? I certainly can. It's about 1013 there. And what's the outside air temperature? The outside air temperature is 14 degrees. It says the density altitude is 2,400 feet. About 2,400 feet. Yeah, but John, that, that's, that's about. We want an accurate figure. Well, this is the best I can do. I brought, <laughs> I brought Anglian Flight Centre's best flight <laughs> computer about two thousand well how on earth are we going to know then what how else can we do it i'll tell you what john if you want to take control of it i've got an app okay i have control you have control uh that's saying the density altitude is 2600 right the pressure altitude is 2100 okay so now we're at the density altitude 2500 feet we need mixture rich and full throttle and we need to keep it at 2000 on there okay right full throttle all the way in paul there we go. Brace yeah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right, we need to let this settle and trim for a straight level, don't we? Yeah, we do. What we'll do is we'll get it to, a, to where we're nice and settled before we will measure it. The speed slowly builds and Paul gets the aircraft trimmed and level. We find that at full throttle, the RPM was just over the red line. So we pulled it back to 2600 RPM for the test. At a density altitude of 2,500 feet, the airspeed settled nicely at exactly 110 knots. I wanted to try the test going the opposite way at a density altitude of 2,000 feet, which will be 1,500 feet on the altimeter. Do you want to turn around, you can come reduce the power if you want, um, and come down to 1,500 on there? Yep, OK. The different altitude and direction made no difference. We achieved the same indicated airspeed, 110 knots. I think that's very stable at 110. Uh, yeah, I do as well. Exactly, I agree with that. Now is exactly where we want it. Well, that's all good. Shall we head back then? Yeah, let's do that, John. So what do you think? Are you excited about possibly gaining a knot or two? I'm very excited, John. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think that'll be great. We'll find out the results soon. This episode of The Flying Reporter is sponsored by Pooley's Flight Equipment. And if you want your aircraft to look its best and perhaps even go faster, well, who knows, then why don't you give it a clean?
Pulis has a wide range of cleaning products for sale, especially designed for light aeroplanes and helicopters. I particularly like the leading edge spray for getting the bugs off my wings and the Pulis dry sparkle waterless wash for the rest of the airframe. Many products on sale at Pulis qualify for the Flying Reporter 5% discount. Just use my special code TFR. We've all heard of car valet and detailing companies, but there are experts in cleaning aeroplanes too. Mark Kemp is from Aeroshine Aviation Detailing and he sets to work on our shabby Cessna. Mark, you say on your website that if we have our aeroplane cleaned and polished, we'll gain about five knots. Really? Clients and customers and aircraft owners before now say that they've gained, you know, five, eight knots. Out eight of, knots? Out of, after a polish. Really? Yeah. Um, it's never been scientifically done, so hopefully what we're doing today will give some clarity on that. So are there any other benefits of cleaning your aeroplane other than it looks a bit shiny and maybe you can get a knot or two extra? Well, yes, uh, bugs collecting on the, the leading edges and, and other areas of the aircraft uh, could cause corrosion. Well, they actually can, they can damage the paint. The toxins in bird muck and bugs can yeah. actually damage the paint. You've had a look at the Skyhawk there, so you can see what it looks like, how tarnished the, the paintwork is, how many bugs there are on it, how much muck there is underneath. How many knots are you going to add to this aeroplane, do you think? <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot here. <laughs> um, I'd hope to get between three and five knots out of it. OK. But we'll see. <laughs> I leave Mark and Cameron to continue their hard graft. Just wait until you see the transformation. I wanted to get some scientific input into this experiment, so I asked Dr Duke Nguyen to oversee our work. He's a postdoctoral researcher at the Department of Aerospace Engineering at Bristol University. He spends his days researching aircraft dynamics and aircraft controls. He's actually even a private pilot himself. So Duke, what do we know about this issue? So we know that dirt and bug on aircraft are somewhat similar to icing. So they alter the shape of the wing, which disrupts the airflow. And as a result, you have more drag and you also get less lift. You should also note that when you have less lift, you have to fly at a higher angle of attack to maintain lift, the same amount of lift that further increases your drag. And there's been some studies into this, some, you know, some of the big airlines or you know aircraft manufacturers have looked into this haven't they yeah so uh, airbus did a study on this on the big airbus airliners because they're they really concerned about saving money and they found out that um if you if you have a large fleet and you fly regularly then you could save up to um four thousand dollars per month and that translates to about 15 kilograms of fuel per flight hour However, that's for a 70 ton, 72 ton aircraft. What do you think to our test then? You've helped us sort of formulate the methodology for this. It's not quite scientific, but it's probably as close as we can get to um, in, our, in our setting here. Do you think we're gonna see any results? Well, I've tried my best, and <laughs> my guess is we would see a margin again in the region of one to three knots. And if we got, say, three knots improvement from a shiny, clean Cessna, yeah. How much would that save us over the course of a year? Sure, uh, we can make some uh, ballpark calculation. So if you fly 50 hours a year at 100 knots, that's 5,000 miles. If you gain three knots of airspeed, then over the course of the whole year, your 50 hour journey reduces to 48.5 hours. So you save one and a half hours. This aircraft burns around at around 30 litres of fuel per hour at two pound 15 per litre. So 30 times 1.5 times £2.15, you save £97 over the course of the whole year. It sounds like a reasonable saving and could be multiplied if you flew more than 50 hours a year, but that's assuming you would get a three-knot improvement and you were dedicated to keeping your aeroplane clean and shiny every day of the year. That in itself will be time-consuming and costly. A six knot or even eight knot increase that some of Mark's customers claim to have achieved could make it worthwhile. Right, it's time for the big reveal. Mark and Cameron have been working on the Cessna for more than 10 hours. 
Has it cleaned up nicely? I think it looks amazing. Yeah, this is the, it looks actually better than when I first got it. It's, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, it looks brand new. Now, yeah, very impressed with the, uh, yeah, there's, there's no marks, there's no bugs. Yeah, just looks really, really good. Very intrigued now to see how it reacts when we, uh, when we do the same route we did yesterday. You know that this would be a crime to fly this now <laughs> because one, <laughs> one trip up in the air, two days of hard work have uh, been completely destroyed by all the bugs around here. It's time for the moment of truth, our second flight test. And she threw herself into the air. Yeah, she's desperate to get up. That's a good sign, isn't it? A good start. Oh, I think so. Right from the off, things are looking promising. Paul's certain the Cessna is flying better than ever. The windscreen looks amazingly clear. I think it's the clearest <laughs> I've ever seen it. <laughs> but is it all shine and no substance? Mark, even hoovered out in here. He the did. He's clean, he's cleaned everything. Uh... He did say he's quite a perfectionist and I, I, can, like I can quite believe that. We head back to the exact same spot we flew yesterday and confirm what altitudes we need to fly based on today's temperature and pressure. So temperature is warm. Uh, is 15 degrees. Oh no, look. Uh, remaining clear of the CMA above. What? Oh no, we've got a bug. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, it's a big bug as well. I'm a little bit excited to see how this works out. Yeah, I am as well. I'm very intrigued. Uh, Mark has worked so hard on it, it would be such a shame to go back and tell him he was actually a bit slower. <laughs> We're back at a density altitude of 2,500 feet. We deliberately chose this area over the sea for the test, as in theory we're less likely to get thermals and turbulence from trees and buildings. But even out here it's quite bumpy today, and keeping the aircraft stable is proving quite a challenge. I think we've got, we had a, we might, we've got a few bumps there, so I'm going to discount that, but I think we were looking like about 112. Yeah, and it's 113. Got a few bumps though, haven't we? Yeah. I'm worried that the bumps are affecting the results. That feels pretty... That's stable there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that is stable there. We've got 112, 111, 110, 108. It's these bumps, unfortunately. Yeah, it's... Uh... Shall we do a U-turn and see if we get a better... Yep. Stay more stable. Let's go to the right, shall we? Just go out a little bit more if we can. We're seeking some more stable air, heading offshore a little further and turning the other direction. It seems to work, and soon we have a result. Yesterday, our airspeed at 2600 RPM was 110 knots. Today... This feels good, you've got a good 112, 113, 115, 114. It's consistently higher than 110. Yes. 114, 15, 16. It is doing 114. Yeah. And we're quite stable now. We are, this is the best it's been, I think. 114. I'd say 114 is what we've got there. Yep sometimes more but I think that's the weather. We try again at a density altitude of 2,000 feet as we did yesterday and the results are the same. A clean Cessna is three to four knots faster than a dirty one. Do you know what I think he's done it? Yeah <laughs> I think you're right he's got between three and four knots extra which is what he said wasn't it give or take? Yeah. yeah I agree with that we've done everything you've done everything right density altitude yeah same location yeah do you want to head back in then? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go and give him the good news. It wasn't the easiest of test conditions and so a margin for error must be considered, but we did our best and I think there is no doubt Golf Golf Delta is flying faster than before. It's been a lot of fun doing the experiment and if you enjoyed watching it, then please can I ask you to like the video and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. It really, really does mean a lot to me if you do. Well, I bet you're eager to know <laughs> the results, aren't you? Come on then, tell us all. <laughs> well, what was it you were looking for again? Uh, I'm going to guess at four knots. Four knots, you said up to three, one to three. That's right. 
we got between three and four knots extra. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Look at the relief Brilliant. on his face. Look at the relief on his oh, face. Thank you to Mark at Aeroshine Detailing for putting in all that hard work. And thank you for watching. Until next time, fly safely, my friends.